Ladies and gentlemen, are you fans of the game of chess? You would have never expected it, but it seems like everywhere you look in 2022-2023, chess is being mentioned. And the two most popular active chess players in the world are named Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. They are demons at speed. Chess time controls very clearly the number one and number two ranked players in the world. And in this video, I'm going to show you one of the most recent games that they played in Chess.com's Title Tuesday tournament. And I played an impact. I played a role in Hikaru's victory over Magnus. Now, I didn't help Hikaru during the game. That would be cheating. Don't do that. But I will show you, uh, well, just in what way uh, I assisted. Now, a little caveat, okay, before we jump into this game. You know, because Hikaru might watch this and he might say, that idiot did not help me at all. He's a trash chess player. He's not wrong, okay? Hikaru's not wrong. Just, I'm, just, I'm just getting that out there. But uh, I'd like to show you what I'm talking about. Now... Hikaru began the game with a3, um, but very quickly, and Hikaru's played a3 against Magnus a few times now, uh, but very quickly, uh, the game became uh, a Sicilian defense, one of my favorite variations against the Sicilian defense. You see, against e4, c5, I like to play this move a3. It's a very interesting move, and the idea is to play a what's called delayed wing gambit. Sometimes it seems like there's a lot of uh, very stupid chess opening names. And the point is, I like to gambit this pawn and then take this massive center. And then, like, the position just looks really nice. It's very fluid, very fun, dynamic position. And I've won many games. I win, like, 70% of my games from this position. And so, naturally, I have a course on this opening. Now, in this game, uh, we got a different move order, but we got to this position uh, via g6, bishop g7, uh, and that's what black wants to play. Now, in this position, Hikaru developed his bishop to c4 and the knight to c3. And the idea here is that white is actually going to target this pawn. White is not going to play traditional developing moves. Uh, white is going to play h4, h5 very quickly, if allowed. Uh, and there's positions that white just gets a completely winning position in about 10 or 15 moves. Now, you're probably wondering, where did I assist? Give, give, me, a little bit of, give me a little bit of time, I promise. Knight to c6. Uh, and now Hikaru plays knight e2 right away, which is a very slight inaccuracy as far as I'm concerned. He might disagree, and we are free to debate. Personally, I like to play d3 uh, and then immediately h4, h5. I don't like to commit the knight just yet, but, you know, if Hikaru and I played 100 games against each other, he would win probably all 100 of them, so I, you know, I, uh, I'll let him play what he wants. And long story short, you know, here comes this h4 idea, h5. And now we get to this position, right? This position from the opening. Now, where I assisted, okay, is naturally, since I like this opening and I'm a chess instructor, I have a chess course called 1E4 New York Style. This is my chess course. Link is in the description, by the way, if you want to check it out. And if we scroll all the way over to chapter 7 and take a look at the study against the Sicilian defense, folks... There's annotations on the screen. Look at the position. All right, it's a slightly different move order, okay? But Magnus chose not to allow Hikaru to play h5. Look at this position. Queen is on d2. The knight is on e2. It is essentially the same position as we have in the Hikaru Magnus game. When I saw this, I got so excited. I was like, oh my God, this is exactly the way I recommend folks to play. Now, listen, I'm not saying, okay, listen, I am not saying Hikaru has my course and studied it diligently, but I'm also not not saying that, you understand? <laughs> right? The only difference in the Hikaru game uh, is the bishop is on c4, okay? And in the course, the knight is still here. Like I said, I like to delay moving the knight, and I bring the bishop back right away. I bring the bishop back to avoid getting hit with, like, pawn moves, right? And so basically, uh, although Hikaru's very next move was bishop back to a2. So he literally played the exact Gotham recommendation, right? Now, the position is very tense and very complicated. You will notice that Magnus has delayed castling. Okay, this is very instructive. Uh, because if, let's say, one of the reasons I like to play bishop a2 early is because a lot of players here with black just play castling, and suddenly h4 comes. And by the way, I don't like to play knight e2. And I'll show you exactly why. I'm going to give you my kind of full, you know, reasoning here, uh, you know, me me method to the madness, if you will. 
Um, you know, I've, I've played games that go like this, and, you know, a a H5 is just decimation. Like, white is just crushing here. This attack is just monstrous. Like, sometimes I'll even, you know, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll play like bishop d2 just to do this, and I don't put my knight in front of my queen so I can play g4. And then I play h5. And, and I mean, I, j I just shred open the black position. And, and I mean, you just, you just win. So the a3 Sicilian is a very, very potent weapon. As you can see here, Slackfish already thinks that black is in very severe trouble. And it only gets, gets worse quickly if black plays a couple of inaccurate moves and white just completely steamrolls on the king side. I mean, the attack is really, really nice. But, you know, Magnus being a very good player, uh, delays his castling. And he kind of thwarts the white position. But it doesn't matter. The, pos the position is still very, very interesting and full of life. And this is kind of like... It's very exciting when very high-level players test out your lines. Now, yes, it's Title Tuesday, it's Blitz, it's, you could argue, meaningless chess compared to some of the other chess that these guys play in tournaments, but that doesn't really mean that, you know, uh, well, I mean, they played the line, right? So, Bishop to b7. Now let's see how both sides try to break through one another. For the record, it is probably still too dangerous to castle this way, because as you can see, it jumps to plus two. That's because of the move g4. When you castle on opposite sides, you need to realize that the burden of responsibility to not get completely slaughtered is on, it is on you. I mean, it, it, this position is already plus three, plus five, if black is not careful. I mean, the attack is just coming. Just here, get rid of the bishop, bring in the queen. And this bishop is a sniper from a2. So that is why Magnus plays absolutely all the right moves and still gets put under pressure with the move queen to f4. And now Hikaru steps on the gas, okay? Hikaru takes the knowledge built up from Mr. Gotham himself. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Probably not. Um, but you never know. And Hikaru attacks the pawn. But there's a very interesting idea here. You see, Magnus plays the move f6, which looks like it just loses a pawn, right? If bishop takes, rook f8. Actually, it doesn't lose a pawn. It loses a bishop. Did I say pawn? And yet, Hikaru had all this planned, and Magnus allowed him to sacrifice the queen for content, I guess, uh, because after bishop takes pawn, rook f8, Hikaru gets a bishop, and he gets a queen. So Hikaru has a rook, a bishop, and a pawn for a queen. Five, three, one is nine, nine is nine, nine is nine. There you go. However, Hikaru is better. Why is he better? Because he has more. He got more pieces. Right? And all his pieces are playing, whereas this queen is just trying not to be lost. Like, black is a move away from losing his queen, just so you understand. Um, so, you have, to, you have to understand, like, Magnus now has to fight back. He does with the move d5. What does Hikaru do? He pins the knight to the rook, and then he puts the bishop on the very powerful g5 square. Now, in this position, um, Magnus plays the move knight d4. The idea of knight d4 is very interesting. So if you take on e7, <clears throat> looking for this and this, uh, that works. But black is going to take here. And what you want to do when you play against the queen, when you have a piece imbalance against the queen, you want to keep as many pieces on the board as possible because the more you strip down your position, the queen is going to grow in strength. So Kikaru plays f3, um, and Magnus plays b5, which is a mistake. Why is it a mistake? Well, Magnus, remember, was trying to go bishop e7, rook takes f4. That was his point. But when you play b5, trying to attack Hikaru, that pawn got destabilized. Can you unhighlight? Thank you. So now, Hikaru can take. Because if Magnus plays this move, now that pawn is no longer defended. And the black position just completely collapses. Because the knight is hanging. When the knight moves out of the center, I'm going to take this... And I mean, I'm just, I'm just winning all your pieces. <clears throat> Black is very quickly running out of all his pawns. Black is very quickly running out of all his pieces. White is just doing very well. So Magnus makes another mistake. And suddenly, after queen e7, knight g6, has lost basically his entire house. He's, it's now two rooks and three pawns. Hikaru is up three points of material and 40 seconds against Magnus, using none other than the a3 Sicilian variation suggested by, you know, <laughs> I mean, I'm just saying, right? Like, I played a role in this, all right? Not really, maybe, sort of. Maybe I just wanted to make a, you know, funny YouTube title out of it. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, it's, it's nice when Hikaru and Magnus play each other. Um, and so now we begin the conversion process, right? So, rookie one, we have to trade a few pieces. 
It's a question of like, should white rush to trade the knights off? Make no mistake, if it's two rooks and eight pawns against queen and five, the rooks are going to win. So Magnus plays queen g8, looking to instigate. Hikaru takes on d5. And Hikaru could have played it slow. He could have played like rook d2, but he didn't want to. He wants to bust open the position. And, you know, if, if e takes d5 happens, I mean, Hikaru can play like... I don't know why the computer really hates this move. Uh, it just it doesn't want to allow queen g3. So like rook c1 and then getting in with the rook and bullying everything. So instead of that, Magnus gets wild. He takes on g2. He says, you know what? This is my only way of counterplay. So Magnus allows the pawn to domino into e6, two squares away from becoming a queen. He takes king a1, but now Hikaru is plus four, and he's completely winning. Completely winning. But, all right, um, both of these guys are the world's best defenders. They are so good at defending on pleasant positions, and when they clash against each other, it's just incredible. So Magnus plays bishop c6, Hikaru pushes, and now the bishop is locked to e8. So, I mean, he has, Hikaru has made... I don't want to say a mockery out of the black pieces, but I mean, it, like, it, the white pieces have obliterated the black pieces in this game. Knight e4 looking for knight f6, knight d6, and knight c5. Magnus plays the only move, queen h2. Hitting h4 and defending the d6 uh, attack. Now Hikaru can just play rook c1. Which looks kind of ridiculous because knight c2, but that doesn't actually do anything because after it takes queen c2, congratulations, I go here, then I go here, and I can kick you out immediately with my sniper bishop and then e8 queen. So rook c1 is winning. But again, low time. Things happen. Rook h1. Now Magnus goes back to the center. Now Hikaru plays rook c1. But now Magnus plays c4. It's a little bit annoying. Okay, a little bit annoying. Hikaru takes. And now again, if bc4, Hikaru is going to shred open the position with the move rook c4 check or bishop. I mean, every, everything is probably winning. So Magnus says, okay, you can have this pawn and you can have my b pawn. I'm going to give you both pawns. So Magnus has like nothing left. He's down five points of material. Five. But he wins the e7 pawn. He wins the pawn that was the most annoying, right? So Hikaru plays c5, looking for the move knight d6. I get it. Magnus only has three pieces left. I mean, his pawns are absolutely useless. They are dead. They can't move. Hikaru's got five pawns. And if Magnus doesn't play fast, Hikaru's going to go here, rookie one, Get rid of this knight, bulldoze, push the pawns, game is going to be over. So it, it's done, right? Like the video's over, Magnus is going to lose. No, no, no. He plays bishop a4. Now, Hikaru's kind of spoiled for choice here, right? Like, I mean, there's a lot of different ideas for black. Maybe he wants knight b3 to weaken white's king and try to mate him. Maybe he wants knight c2, knight b4. But like... I mean, the computer is so unimpressed with the black position. It's just like, yeah, just go rook c4. Okay, so what? He checks you. You take it. All right, and? And then you give him a check. And he goes here. And you just like play rook e4 or something. But get your second rook. Go mate him. It's a little bit scary to open up your king, though. So Kikaro plays rook g1. Now Magnus plays knight c2 check. And wins the b pawn. One step at a time. All right, Kikaro plays knight d6. This was always the idea. King to d7. How is the black king surviving this position? Like, how is there not some rook g7 or rook d1? Somehow all the squares, the important squares are covered. And I mean, it's never too late to lose in chess, right? Like, you said you play a move like this, suddenly bishop c2 check is coming, queen h4 is coming, queen rotates over to get to your king where the bishop used to stand or the knight used to stand, right? It's very scary. So king d7, Hikaru plays rook c4. And then remember, time is ticking, 17 seconds for white. Oh my goodness, he's gonna potentially screw this up. Queen e3! Oh my gosh! Magnus, this is Hikaru's one bad move of the game. Hikaru has literally played one bad move. He has played 36 good moves. Winning the game, he plays one mistake. One mistake on the 37th move. And Magnus plays the best move instantly. Okay, it took him nine seconds. But queen e3. And the idea is this hangs, this hangs, and queen d3 check. So it's a danger level. Magnus, listen, he's a seasoned Gotham viewer. He knows that when a knight is hanging, you don't need to defend it if you can create a stronger threat. And what's even more impressive is if you give a check and try to win this, this is mate. Remember Magnus's ridiculous bishop move like 10 moves ago? Like, why did Magnus move the bishop here? Because it's just a long-term beneficial move. Magnus knew that when he moves his bishop out to the outskirts of the board, it would play a role in making a comeback. First, the knight would come here and take the pawn, and then the king's escape would be sealed. 
So all of a sudden, Magnus has fought all the way back. Hikaru plays c6 check with 9 seconds on the clock. He's trying to sacrifice the knight and like promote the pawn. So bishop c6, now rook d1, and now Hikaru snaps back. Queen e2, and he's better again. Okay, if he plays bishop b3, but he plays rook cc1. He's trying to be solid and avoid checks and avoid any weaknesses, but the position is back to equal. Now Magnus arrives with the knight. Hikaru plays the only move that doesn't lose here, knight c4. Covers mate and also covers the rook being taken because now there's a pin. But what happens when the king moves out of the way? Well, now rook d2, very clutch move. Very clutch move. Now, the players here have an option to get, get rid of the rooks and the queens and probably draw this game, but neither guy wants that. Magnus plays queen takes f3 as Hikaru has four seconds on the clock. You see, both guys have five seconds remaining. Queen f3, Hikaru plays rook d1. Magnus plays bishop e4, setting up an attack. The king slides to the corner out of the way. Now we have queen f4, and Hikaru has an option here to play rook d3. And then if bishop d3, rook d3, there is check, but then I block and I, I save my rook, and probably three pieces is enough to beat the queen. But then there was some other stuff happening potentially in that, in that, in that position. But bishop b1, knight c5, and now disaster strikes. The players look to be repeating moves, but Magnus is keeping the tension. Hikaru plays rook c1, bishop b5, and rook c3. And with one second remaining, Magnus has his best position of the entire game, as he can play knight e4, forking the rooks. But Magnus doesn't get the move off in time and loses the game on time. Oh my gosh. Now Magnus had other moves here. He could have given a check. Hikaru would have gone here. There was bishop c4. But then there would have been rook dc2 and a bulldozer. I mean, it's an incredibly tricky position. If knight to b3, then I actually just take in your pin so you can't recapture. But... The players were scrambling, and knight e4 is apparently winning, because even though you have a discovered check, I'm going to take your rook. So you can give me a discovered check, but I just play knight takes c3, and you lose. You lose everything. You lose this, too. It's very bad. So, a crazy game, ultimately decided by the clock, but it started with a very familiar sight. I was so excited to see this. I was like, oh my god, because, you know, I'm playing title Tuesday, my viewers are like, Ah, uh, you know, uh, Hikaru beat Magnus on time. And I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 whatever. They played another Blitz game. But then I saw the game. I was like, wait a minute. I play this. I'm going to look at this game because I, I've played this position actually uh, a good amount of times. And most grandmasters do this exact thing. So I'm actually going to study this game. I'm going to study how Hikaru played this, how he sacrificed his queen. And I'm going to try to use this in the future. This is the way you learn openings. You study model games by players who are better than you. And it was incredible. Like, we got to this position on move 10, and I'm like, okay, I, didn't, I don't exactly play 92, but, I mean, this is amazing. Like, just, just, this looks exactly like it looks in the course. <laughs> like, queen d2, queen d7, a couple more moves obviously have to be played. And um, it's just very nice to see uh, how Hikaru handled the position. So, in summary, uh, did I help Hikaru win this game? Uh, no, the gods of time did. Um, but, uh, was it very nice to see Hikaru playing move for move, basically, the opening that I recommend to so many of you? And of course, yeah, you can't get a better shining endorsement than that. Now, listen, I, as I said, uh, Hikaru might see the title of this video and go, that, uh, don't associate me with that moron. And I would respect that, make no mistake. But, uh, this was nice. It was a, it was a nice, nice thing to see. And, um, I look forward to more Hikaru and Magnus battles, uh, in title Tuesday. And uh, yeah, this is the story of how I sort of, probably not, but maybe, helped Hikaru take down Magnus uh, in Title Tuesday. So there you go. I'll see you in the next video. Get out of here. Oh, and the course is in the description, in case you want to check it out.